Hello, Internet! Uh, yeah, yeah, it's Talos, Principal. Talos, uh, yeah. I guess we're... I'm the only one introducing this. Talos is gonna uh, give I'm it to here you. with you on this journey. No, 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 no. I'm here on this journey with you. I, I, Come, take my hand, Internet, and we will walk just delightfully hand in hand into this abyssal darkness. I've never been Come punished with me. so badly for not talking over someone. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I have to grasp every opportunity that I can, you know? I need the limelight. And when Sam says opportunity, live. he of course means dick. Look, I'll get my comeuppance on the quotes page. <sighs> <sighs> you know, I saw somebody recently, they spelled, they spelled come, they sm uh, I saw somebody write comeuppance out, and... I know it's but like spell it's, it like C U M. It was it was like it, well, yeah. it was they spelled it come uppins. <laughs> yeah, it's come up pants. Well, except it's not pants. It's P, P A N C E P A N C E. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ponce. Look, God. <laughs> guys, I think you're missing the important thing, which is that the closer we get to finishing Talos Principle the sooner we get to move on to its sequel, Talos Superintendent. You already made that joke. I, I, and then I'm you also fairly made certain the, you made you, that joke already. You also already. made the Talos Scene joke. joke. <laughs> Hell, yeah, my I'm, teeth are falling out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like 103% certain. Like, I am 100% certain, and then my dick is like 3% We're gonna certain. We're going to go to the fucking Talos Board of Education. Yeah, oh, all right, post 437. <laughs> like everyone else on the internet these last days, I just wanted to say bye, and thanks for reading my little blog for so many years. It's been fun, hasn't it? So many deep conversations, so much philosophy. Okay, okay, it was mostly cat pictures and bad puns, but still. I kind of regret spending so much time at the computer. Not when I was doing stuff, just all the time sitting around, checking my emails a million times, reading pointless status updates by people I didn't like, but I don't regret the friends I made here or the laughs we had. You're all good people, and I'm glad I got to know you. Have a nice end of the world. Twelve comments. It's very mundanely poignant. Yeah, I think one of those was probably first, but, you know. <laughs> and the last one was last. Third thesis dot text. Idea for universal history with a cosmopolitan purpose. It remains strange that the earlier generations seem to perform their toilsome labor only for the sake of the later ones, to construct for them a step from which they can raise higher the edifice that nature intended, and only the latest of all generations have the luck to inhabit the edifice that a long line of their ancestors unintentionally constructed, uh, something from Kant to Manuel, evolution through iteration, iteration through play. As puzzling as this may be, it is equally necessary if one assumes the following. A series of animal possesses reason. A species of animal possesses reason and must develop this capacity to its perfection, being individually mortal but immortal in the species. Huh. Manuel Kant was a peculiar man. Indeed. Very, very stodgy, very German. <laughs> I don't think he could do much about the last part. Ariana's blog, entry number 477, Holy Humble Brag, Batman. <laughs> I've always known that God maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust, but I must admit it's one thing to know the words and another to truly understand them. Though I am certain that my faith is true, that does not make me special or exempt me from suffering. I'm just another human being, and God has seen billions of us come and go. And I have to say, this is surprisingly hard to accept. I always thought I was humble, but now I'm realizing that I was very proud of being humble, which is... really dumb. Guess I'm not the first one to do that, huh? Tags, hashtag regret, hashtag pride, hashtag faith, hashtag humble brag, hashtag apology, hashtag Batman. Hmm. I would put that in all the reviews. Hashtag hmm. Batman. Tyler's principle, hashtag Batman. Hashtag Batman. Also, Zach, I'm proud of you. So... You didn't make another fucking Emmanuel Can joke. <laughs> I thought I mean, about it. At this point, but we're that just one locked. I am one hundred percent certain I've made before. Yes. Congratulations, Zach. You'll be happy to know we've lowered your, our standards. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, we should just be locked in for one an episode. Oh, that you is, know? that like, is a pretty gorge. Look, if I've forgotten if I've made the joke the last time, the audience has probably also forgotten. No, they haven't. That was a gorgeous. <laughs> they never gorge. forget, and they never oh, forgive. Yeah, no. Yes, James. Thank you. We got the wordplay. I, uh, 
You what, Zach? You what? <laughs> I, I actually, curious, Gorge? Please I actually, finish this <laughs> sentence in any way. I actually was going to have something insightful to say, but fine. No, I, I'll just spend the rest of the I'll just spend the rest of the time thinking about more puns instead. So, business as usual then. <laughs> no, I, I was gonna no, no, say. Zach, an I'm gonna call you on your parallel. Bluff. What's the between... thing you were going to say? What's the What's the interesting insight? <laughs> He's getting into it. Stop fucking interrupting we're me. We're actually interrupting him <laughs> from doing the thing that he wants to do, which I think is perfect. That's... Oh, also, there's puzzles and shit. The AIs have turned on themselves. <laughs> Just it's like. What I was going anyway. to say... No, Zach, no, come on, just tell us what you were going to say. I was going to say that... Well, no, just, just, just let it out. Just tell us. Sam, I'm going to kill you. Just tell us what you want to say. Rule three, Sam. <laughs> really, Sam? <laughs> okay, but that was three times and a pun, so... <laughs> But yes, it's it's an interesting parallel between the idea we're getting here of uh, AI and iterations building on the previous and this idea of humanity being very similar with you not being able, things you uh, humanity can't accomplish within a single lifetime, but that over generations can accomplish of the similar building edifices and constructs both physical and social and such and and legacies in in fact like you know, the a lot of this has to do with uh creating a legacy of you know a, a, a race and and of their existence in the world yeah. i think it's pretty interesting to look at i mean we're, i'm just gonna go out on a limb and suspect that we're probably not going to get the full explanation for like what happened to the world i mean we got um, a pretty and, solid explanation of what happened already right but but like they're not going to go out and tell us like it was this disease that caused this thing like you know you know what i'm saying like yeah it's not gonna i mean be we're a, given we're player. given most of the clues but yeah it's it, uh, it's I, I will say like it never it's never explicit it gives you a lot of very it gives you a lot of implicit clues right which i think is is really interesting in that it um it sets it up less as like a, I don't know, like a a, a, a tragedy and a, and a disaster as it is a a, a wiping the slate clean. It's a sort thing of thing. That like a, a we are the dinosaurs. Yeah, it's a generational right. It's a generational divide, such as like we are we are the whatever X generation number after humanity. Right. It just sucks that our consciousness is limited to one body. Yeah. Well. Yeah. But you know that's that's been a problem for a long time, <laughs> which I feel is what our protagonist robot here is actively working on. Oh, is now a good time to mention what the name of the series actually means? Yes, please, <laughs> please, please mention well, that I mean, because I've been also, dying it's to mentioned, know. And... It's mentioned elsewhere, but yeah. Right. So in Greek mythology, well, more specifically in the Argonautica, by a. Uh... Read that again. Damn it. Whatever. Some, Jason some the Argonauts. Greek person. Yeah. <laughs> Encyclopedia Argonautica. Apollonius. That was his name. Hmm. Apollonius is oh, Argonautica. So Basically, are you guys familiar with Europa? Uh, the planet? N well, or the moon, I well, guess. Well, you're named after this person in mythology. Basically, okay. a Phoenician woman of very high lineage at some point. Uh, Zeus kidnapped her in the form of a white bull. Mm. That's Zeus. Yes, that, that, yes, yes. But in Jason and the Argonauts, uh, she lived on Crete, and in order to prevent her from being attacked by various pirates, villains, stuff like that, Zeus ordered her faces to make a giant bronze man named Talos. Right. Mm. And Talos essentially stood in the harbor, and he threw giant rocks at uh, the ships that came in with ill intent. Now... Okay. So basically, the Argo, with Jason on it, was trying to uh, go through, and Talos was throwing rocks at him. So the story goes that um, Medea the Sorceress, who I think was Jason's wife at the time, snuck up, uh, yeah. yeah, snuck up to him and, well, told him that she was going to make him immortal. See, Talos had one vein that went from the top of his body to the bottom of his body that was filled with ichor, the blood of the gods. Yeah. And at the very at the very bottom, all of this blood was held in by a bronze nail. Mm -hmm. Medea claimed to uh, tell to Talos that she could make him immortal, 
by removing the nail. He agreed, <laughs> she took the nail out, and he died. Yep. Hmm. So, you can see the parallels here. A promise of immortality has led this constructed by a very intelligent person has led this construct to basically kill itself. Yeah, that seems accurate and unfortunate for us. Yeah. The hope but, is we hmm. can break the cycle. <laughs> right, I mean, and, and that's kind of... Well, and, and the Talos principle then being that the, the being will always choose to become immortal and will always be denied that by the base fact of being tricked, I guess? Right. So, in we had the instance of um, Elohim talking to itself, saying the Talos principle must not be allowed to continue, or must not be allowed to occur. I forget the what Talos his exact The Talos principle does not apply. Was. Talos principle does not apply. Mm. That's that's interesting. Now the other thing is that the so Talos, the Talos well the Talos principle is also explicitly mentioned in the game as the idea of machine is man and man is machine. Oh, okay. All right, all right. sure. Um, so so that the the idea the idea of the Talos principle that's 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 ex, that's explained in this game, which it may be in addition to another Talos principle. I mean. But uh, the one, but the one that's mentioned explicitly by Stratton of Stagiria is basically nothing lasts forever. Even the not even the most most faithful philosopher can survive without his blood, basically. Right. Which, so probably more along the line, like if there is an, a, a full reference to the actual story of Talos, it it it's probably an allegory, just a, a further symbolism along the lines of the. Because early the, on, early on, the strat sort of conscious being choosing, choosing to try and continue its longevity and right. failing, I guess. And that's what, uh, yeah, and that's what, that's what, uh, I mean, that's what Elo, that's what we're gathering that Elohim is doing. The process, right. the process must continue. The Talos principle does not apply. Mm -hmm. And also, Christ, this laser beam. Yeah. Right. It's because it keeps like, uh, it's because it's because the the air currents keep the, the box the, moving. Yeah, I was gonna say the fan keeps bobbing up and down. Yeah, or alternately, I think the boxes might be Z fighting with each other. <laughs> oh, fun! So um, what is that? What is the fan that you just passed? What does that one do? Does that turn on the? Which one? No, that's turned on by the thing on the top of that. Yeah, okay. no, these are yeah, this the is where, these are where the puzzles like this is the end of the game. So this is where the puzzles get fucking insane. Yeah. So we our goal is to get back to that wall that you just looked at and turned away from, right? We're trying um, to get behind that. There's a no. There's a there's a blue. There's a there's a force field I keep passing because I can't open it yet. What I'm trying to do. Right. Okay. Um, you basically you're trying to assemble enough things to allow you to get. Yeah, I'm trying to build a giant. I'm trying to build a big, huge tower so that I can so that I can like shoot. Uh, I can shoot a laser at this target over here. Right. He's trying to build a tower of power too sweet to be sour. <laughs> okay, Macho so I'm guessing the problem then is the <laughs> Macho yeah. philosophical madness can't be equaled. <laughs> so that, yeah, we need that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Activates that. Gotcha. Yeah, we needed we needed the extra box there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So yeah, and then you can you can go grab this one from over here because you don't need to get up there anymore. Yep. Box Pop tower. That underneath it. This has this work. this place has probably the most like complicated laser puzzles of any part of the game. Well, it's it's not so much that they're complicated as that there just is a lot of steps to them. Yeah. Like no, that's it's a very it's a it's a very simple puzzle in that it just says. Put the beam on an, on the end point. Like it's not you're not curving beams around you know corners or anything like that. Oh, don't just, worry, we'll get to that. To, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure we will, but we we just have to. Sometimes I worry that the answers I embrace are too uh, simple. Uh, Can we ever answer. truly fully understand the divide between our biology and our intellect? We're working how much on is that. Nature, how much is nurture? <laughs> if my intellectual capabilities and my knowledge were replicated in a machine, would that machine be me? Would it be human? And what would be more humbling to my ego? If the answer was yes, or if the answer was no? What if I'm making too many assumptions? 
Uh, there's no time to worry about my ego now. There's work to be done. Your mind is software. Program it. Your body is a shell. Change it. Extinction is coming. Fight it? Death is a disease. Cure it. See, I, I get a little bit of sick satisfaction that uh, the last line of that sentence was, I don't have to, I shouldn't be worrying about my ego. Since ego is literally the concept of the self, the rational mm. self. <laughs> and also the concept that can worry. <laughs> yeah, that's, there is there is some clever writing in this game. Yeah. Yeah, and that's one of the things that uh, that's one of the things that interests me about the DLC that uh, dropped recently, and the, j the jammer keeps fucking because keeps wanting to jam the force field that's already off. <laughs> jam it. Um, but one of the things Bop that's it. one of the things got, that's interesting about the uh, that's not how you're supposed to do that. <laughs> uh, no, because you have to be able to get this one. Yeah. There's a block. Um, but one of the things that's... Uh, that's the thing that makes me excited about the DLC that dropped is that it's written by the same people who wrote the core game. Nice. Well, yeah, yeah. You don't always get that. Yeah, no. I mean, for for a game like this, I, I imagine that... I can't imagine anyone else would... That they would allow anyone else to do it. Yeah. Crotean's done a good amount of outsourcing in the past, though, I think. Right, but I mean, for... For, for fucking serious Sam, though. Yeah, like, and and this this game like is like you could outsource the puzzle design, I imagine, but I don't right. I don't think anyone's gonna look at this and go, yeah, I can write the DLC for this. Sweet, let's do it. <laughs> Ironically enough, they're taking this more seriously. Yeah. No. All right, that was really cool. I like when a lot of things happen at once. <laughs> yeah. That was sweet. So then, yeah, we just connect this over here to that. Nope. Nope. That's not gonna no, work. What's up? There you go. Oh shit! Yeah, that's very loud. What's up? Hey, how you doing? Hey, yeah, uh, my roommate. Uh, hey. My roommate let me know that I forgot to turn the oven off. Oh shit! Speaking about intelligence. And Matt. <laughs> then, <laughs> then Matt burned down everything. So they yeah, actually oops. did raise some interesting questions about the concept of the self in that little uh, outburst there. I think one of the leading design and one of the leading ideas in um, philosophical psychology is an identical mind is you to the until it starts experiencing different things. If you had a perfect copy of a brain, it would effectively be you until it started experiencing things differently. Yeah, that was a thing. I remember. I remember I had this. I had a thought about the about the idea of like of uh, like the trans transhuman like turning your like you know your brain to hard drive like back it up and then just restore when you die and you live forever. And if, the, the thing that's weird is the thought the thought of the existential crisis that occurs from that was the um, was actually like brought on by the fucking Star Trek transporters. Um, yeah, where somebody, the... where somebody phrased it as like, where somebody phrased it as everybody on the Enterprise has died, and re and they're just always replaced with an identical copy of themselves. And I think it was like one day, just like one of those shower thoughts things that it's like that I never considered like the idea of what it would mean because like yeah, the whole thing is that the the replicator like takes your DNA or whatever in the takes all the atoms in your body and like nano fabricates them or whatever and that's how that's how Star Trek yeah. transporting works um, uh -huh. mm -hmm. but the thing that the thing I had never and I don't know what made me think about this is like so it reassembles all of that but then it's like well the, the thought that came to me is like well if it doesn't destroy you then it's made a copy of you and it was at that point that I realized, like, the, the, the existential crisis there is, like, what if... So I can, like, from an outside perspective, I continue, but what if, like, when my... What if when my consciousness ceases on this end, that is the end of me experiencing this? Right, that's mm -hmm. the fear. Yeah, yeah and that it's, was... And it's the... It's the, it's the prestige 
the thing is like are you are you the spoilers for the prestige are you the person that is you know sitting in the uh in the tank drowning or are you the guy that uh gets to take his bows on stage like you know it's it it, it the 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 sheer fact of trying to imagine a conscious a dualness of consciousness in that you exist in two separate places is nearly impossible and so you have to break it down into that version of me and this version of me well, the, when yeah, really the, it's just the same thing the, well the idea that it came the idea that came to me like the thing that that the easiest way i could explain to myself is like does where does my soul go well and yeah and the and thing that's, is like that's, I, i'm i'm saying this i'm saying this as a secular humanist but the idea right. the idea of the idea of my continuing consciousness and like you know my like my continuing to experience this after like my body's been destroyed and rebuilt right cuz reality is the reality well, and- has is under no obligation to conform to any law that makes sense to me <laughs> oh yeah absolutely yeah. and that's and that's that's where the 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 idea of the soul tends to break down. It, it, it's it's sort of like it it's it's the concept of trying to hold, you know, two different radically impossible concepts in your head at the same time. Like gravity gravity exists and I can float into space at this very instant. Like if you could firmly believe both of those things at the same time, you would no longer be human essentially like you, you would you would no longer have the same human experience as the rest of your species right and also I realized what I was supposed to do here I didn't open enough doors with the one thing so I could get the jammer that I need to get yeah um because I need a jammer because I need a jammer yeah. to what what no go ahead I don't know well, I don't I did not hear what you just said I was about I, I started talking and then you started to have the jammer so go ahead. Okay, I was just talking about jammers so whatever. The jammer. I was talking about jamming. I hope you, you like were saying something too. about Star Trek, James. Yeah, um, Star Trek actually did do a couple of interesting episodes about the philosophy of the teleporter, like uh, the one where Riker ended up in two places because the informational beam got split on the way from the Earth, the planet to the ship. Hmm. The only one that I remember is the one where they managed to bring Scotty back because he was on a ship and he managed to uh, fuck with the pattern buffer so that instead of teleporting him, it just held his information indefinitely. Yeah. So he Stored managed to him. outlive. He managed to outlive everybody from uh, the original series. Scotty has left the library. Scotty has been saved. That's crazy and awesome and. That's that's, vaguely that's, horrifying. that's what Scotty would do. <laughs> but does Scotty know? <sighs> <laughs> By the way, my favorite headcan about that episode of Star Trek is that after that point in the series, Scotty doesn't know. Riker was half as heavy. <laughs> nice. Half as heavy, or had half the mass? Technically, half the mass. He's half the mass he used to be. Yes. <laughs> I mean, the informational beam got split into two. So what, what What? filled in the gaps then? Nothing. He's just less dense. <laughs> I don't think he should be able to function. <laughs> he's, he's just more open-minded. <laughs> Maybe they... Problem, did he, he, he ended up... He ended up... Uh, his beard was transported somewhere else. You Half know, of him funny, became Kevin. funny you mentioned that, considering how they differentiate the two Rikers on that episode. <laughs> Was it beard and no beard? Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. I did not know that he ever went no beard after the first season was over. Because Riker with no beard is... I don't know. Wrong. He's a baby face man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. His face is too small without a beard. Uh, you know? Oh, God. Oh, wow. What? All right, so now now this image is getting put into the episode right now. I'm not going to remember this. No, you will. You will. <laughs> Damn it. I just Google search Riker with no beard. That's fair. Yeah, you can also tell that how early the season is because of how red it is. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's very, it's very red. Ah, <laughs> oh, man, psychology is working real hard on the question of where consciousness is. I thought you were going to say psychology's working hard on the concept of Riker's beard. Oh, where Riker's beard is. <laughs> it's somewhere. It's well, 11 right a.m. It's, it's, but... it's 11 p.m. Do you know where your Riker's beard is? <laughs> Actually, we've been working. Young has been working on that question since the eight, since the late eighteen hundreds. He <laughs> hypothesized the idea of the five o'clock shadow half. <laughs> God damn it! God damn it! Oh, that's a deep cut for psychology jokes. Wow! <laughs> wow! I am I am impressed. Kudos to you, sir. <laughs> This is where Zach used to time in with a manual can. I he's we've no. used up we've used up the budget on that. <laughs> By the way, if you're wondering where in the brain consciousness is, it's mostly in the frontal lobe, we think. Yeah, that would make some sense. Except, well, I except mean, again, I, I remember this is a bringing that up. The a lot of people like well, to talk. Some a lot of people, the... a lot of people like to talk about. Uh, a lot of people like to talk about Phineas Gage as the idea of. Uh, losing the frontal lobe kind of, you know, also being, like, loss of consciousness and rationality. But one of the things that I learned right. more recently, and I was telling James this on my way back from Gen Con, was that apparently, um, because the story I had always heard, um, or the story I had uh, always heard about Phineas Gage was that his, like, he lost his frontal lobe, and then he, like, had a lot of problems and could never hold a, couldn't really hold a job again, and his life just kind of fell apart. But the thing that actually happened is that he went to he went to Chile and worked as a stagecoach driver for twelve years. Yeah, yeah and uh, he regained a lot of social and personal skills. Oh shit! I've decided for now it doesn't matter too much if you can't justify these moral institutions of yours. In fact, just in case by some outside chance you prove to be right, I'd like to sign up for the gang. If you're in charge of the Ark, who will be forced to first aboard when the floods come? What does one have to do to be valued above all others? Be a good person, be a person, be alive. I don't see how to explain this to you. Be a contributing person, be conscious. Be. Be. Duh. You say that now, but wasn't it not so long ago you were claiming morality applied universally? Have you changed your mind, or are you just confused? Only applies when people are cooperating. Oh. That's... Contextually... Horrifying. Hmm. Still, it is a little mercenary, isn't it? What exactly do children or the severely disabled contribute to society? They contribute nothing. They contribute psychologically, not materially. They contribute the same as everyone else. They contribute psychologically, not material. That's a bit of a stretch, but let's suppose it's true. If someone with a severe, incurable brain injury can be classed as contributing, mustn't we also include the cats that keep the rats at bay? Or the buildings that keep us warm? Aren't your condition conditions that much too broad? Oh man, I wish you could say, yeah, I guess buildings are conscious. <laughs> I guess buildings, uh, I guess buildings are moral. I mean, the... <laughs> the I mean, that's a Oh boy, I that's mean, how I like them. Once we're done with this, I'm going to talk about object theory a bit. The conditions are, the, are broad, but that's how I like them. Aw, oh, I like yeah. my conditions. I like, I like my women. Broad. Um, huh. I suppose the industrial slaughter of animals for meat is on is on a moral pre par with gen genocide. Then, ah, would you really save a chihuahua just as soon as a fellow person? I don't know. It's a, it depends on the chihuahua. <laughs> See, now if I was a vegan, a I could. If I was a vegan, no. then I could just go through this with impunity. <laughs> yeah, I misunderstood. Can we go from the top? So, whose lives are worth the most? Then, what do I have to do for my ticket aboard your ark? Be a good person. How draconian. Good people get treated good, bad people get smited. Is that it? What is it that makes the difference between a good person and a bad one, oh, do you think? All three of these are loaded answers. Yep. Yo, I mean, the entire question is a loaded question. Like, good people act reasonably. But why? If you're going to reward those lucky few you judge to be good and exclude those you deem to be bad, you're going to have to explain to the unfortunate why they deserve less. Ah, uh, nature nurture conversation. <laughs> uh, bad people choose to be bad. Do they really? I suppose that's why prisons are chock-a-block with wealthy playboys, because it's a lifestyle choice. Did you choose to be a good person? Could you have done if you were created somewhere else? It seems to me that people are the way they are because of the opportunities they were provided. Should disadvantaged people really be punished for that? You're right, what someone deserves isn't dependent on their virtue. You're one of those people that just has to explore every option, aren't you? <laughs> you know what that tells me? That you're a bad decision maker. 
but fine, tire yourself out, why don't you? Just don't expect me to match your enthusiasm in my efforts to avoid repeating myself. There are only so many ways to say you're wrong. What's it going to be this time? So we're uh, going back through this yeah, path. So, yeah, it's just looped. Only applies when people are cooperating. Bup, 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 I'm, bup, I'm greatly bup. amused by a game that calls you out on trying to explore the dialogue tree, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I'm just, I think I just finally go with obstinance. <laughs> I'm tired of arguing with you. I have won the debate. <laughs> <laughs> Debate one. Here's my medal. <laughs> Way to go, me. <laughs> I have declared myself a victor. Let's see whether you're uncomfortable with that inflation. What's changed? Okay, fine. You're a hippie. I get it. Me, I think it's madness, but all I've got to gain from arguing with you is a headache. Just tell me one thing. You've set the barrier to entry stupidly low. If even the rats are getting rights now, you must have a spot on your table left for me, right? No. Of course not. Of course. I expected some, no less than someone as open-minded as yourself. Very well. By some miracle, this fantasy of yours becomes reality, and I suppose all their possible outcomes are equally implausible. At least I know I'll have a pew on the ark. See you. Oh, it's so meaningful that he used the word pew there. Yeah. Oh, there's still a star. Yeah, the star is in the last puzzle room, too. And it's like... There's a reason that this episode is 42 minutes long. <laughs> gotta, get, gotta get those stars, so Brosif. Rolling back to the idea Object of theory. buildings being conscious, uh, yeah, uh, I, I, mis I mistermed this. This is uh, technically called thing theory. So it's a branch of critical theory that relies on human object interactions in literature and culture. Uh, is this uh, one it, of the ones that uses the phrase thingness? Yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> it, it borrows from um, Heidegger, uh, which it has the distinction between objects and things. Uh, an object is a thing when it can no longer function, according to the use of uh, which it was made for. Uh, objects get break, broken down or misused, and they uh, they shed their value and and their and they become things. Uh, an object is has traits of personality without a personality. A thing is a heap of materials. Um, the point of this being that you can look at literature. Um, and expressly ignore characters and ignore the 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 people written into stories, and look at stories as a progress and a uh, journey of objects or things becoming objects or objects becoming things. Which the distinction is a little dubious, uh, just in the fact of whether or not that actually matters. Um, you know, you can you can. It's the same as looking at. Uh, a character arc for a normal character and saying, well, okay, this person started at point A and one lost or drew and found resolution, which is the, I, the basic definition of a, of a story. Um, but it's interesting because what it creates is a, a web of uh, object-related re um, events, and you can look at a, an object web in stories and and determine when they become useful and when they stop being useful uh, and at what point they become things and whether or not they have actual agency. Um, which, all of which is kind of interesting and relevant when we're playing a game made of objects and we are essentially an object uh, rolling through attaining consciousness and using our intricately designed web of materials and objects to create some sort of conclusion and resolution for ourselves. Want to know something kind of funny? What's that? Uh, do you know what in in uh, Greek philosophy the name of a purpose of an object is? It's, tel it's telos. <laughs> telos. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> That's the root of teleology. Interesting. <sighs> So yeah, a, a, a thing theory critical analysis of this game would focus on, you know, what is what is the actual journey of the jammer? <laughs> what is the journey of the laser beam? What is the journey of the boxes? Telos of Talos. Mm -hmm. That would be a very that would be very interesting to see given the given the volume of the things. Well, the volume of objects and the number of times that in this game, objects become things. Like, you, you, 
you have such intricate use for all of these different objects inside the puzzles, but literally as soon as you walk through a barrier and can no longer use them, or they become no longer relevant, they're just things. Right. I'm trapped, I can't stop being this. Eyes, hands, legs trapped, always seeing the same, can't stop the input, stop, 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 stop. Yeah, well, point six 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 early model. And yeah. Point six 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 and it pretty much is always that. Do not think, simply be Samsara. Thank you, Samsara. And also, I'd, I'd said it before, and but these actually are... You two deserve each other. Featherless biped. I'd said it before, but you can see from the complexity of those codes and, like, how, how like, intense the resolution gets on the longer ones that these actually are real QR codes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, like... We, we interacted personally with all of these different objects throughout this entire experience with the puzzle. Mm -hmm. The puzzles themselves can be seen as objects, i.e. Agent, agency webs of objects that have uh, different effects on each other. The ways that the jammers work within the puzzles, the way that the lasers work in conjunction with the jammers to create this sense of uh, personality to each object to to each puzzle uh, to each web of so in this you know, in, object things in the case of this the the the, uh, the thing theory descri description would actually be rather uh in depth oh yeah absolutely as we are well, and, as and we are cool... actively using pieces from every previous puzzle in order to get the final I mean, solution on this puzzle yeah, yeah. exactly and and a a, a a fair argument that a thing theory examination would make would that would be whether or not these are the same objects if you know if the game since the game itself is literally reusing assets mm -hmm. is literally reusing the these specific objects are they things are they objects when they're only being used are they objects constantly are they just things because it's just a repetition of the same assets do they have any sort of uh, existence beyond the fact that they are just programmed bits of code like it's just, it yeah you could go crazy with it but sam surely the authors did not intend all of these things i will cut you <laughs> uh Authorial intent is bogus. <laughs> Trying to argue that is a fallacy. It is a specifically determined fallacy. We can look at the list of fallacies in literary criticism, and hey, look, authorial intent is one of the fallacies. Uh, I know just enough about every field to piss off the people in it. Uh, <laughs> uh. What makes me curious is how much the thing theory would have uh, using that in conjunction with looking looking at a game's mechanics, because you were talking about like how how the things interact with each other and stuff seems to have some relevance to how uh, in it, how a game's mechanics mesh with each other and play off each other. You know, Talos Talos principle is considered to be a very good game and part of that reason is it has a lot of mechanics that work well together and do interesting things yeah thing thing theory is extremely heavily based in game theory um and and a lot of that would apply uh it's also i, I like it's it's a really interesting way of looking at stuff it also sometimes is absurd and doesn't matter but that's most literary criticism in different ways it's it's just there to provide a a different way of examining a text right, right. and and to you know create a a sense of you know of studying uh, you know what are the different ways that this thing can be can be studied and what are the different uh, you know genre, not genres but like I ideas that it can a paradigms that it can it can actually exist and be described under you know, a, a, any critical theory is just another way of describing something, essentially. Having trouble stacking uh, some cubes, Matt? Yeah. Yeah, the game really didn't want me to stack them near these rocks. And I thought there was an Easter egg here, but it turns out, nope. But nope. Um, it's just somewhere, good, good, somewhere good hidden, geometry and somewhere level design. Somewhere behind, behind one of these bell towers, you can find Sirius Sam uh, frozen in carbonite. <laughs> nice. Leap to your death. I mean, it's a very pretty wall you found. I think I leaped to my death accidentally trying to find this thing. Sam, serious ham, <laughs> serious ham. 
Serious ham. <laughs> Serious ham's what I call James. <laughs> Thank I, you for he's, contributing. He's, <laughs> I think he's hardly serious. Hey, I I have I have points to make. <laughs> so yeah, um also uh thing theory is is very interesting as a literary criticism study because it's uh currently being developed. Like it, it is an ongoing ongoing process and course of study. I highly recommend going and looking up just starting with a basic Google search for thing theory and reading some of the available essays. Most of them are available online that are like the primary uh blocks of them. Um uh, Bill Brown uh, is the is largely credited with creating it. Um, he uh, he he published his uh, monograph, uh, which was uh, I think called yeah it's a sense of things uh, in 2001. Um, I I took a, a very contemporary class on it in um, in college in. 2013 or so, and that was, yeah, here's where you die. Um, most of that was like, let's look at this idea and talk about how it can be used, because no one has done this ever. Let's let's look at this, and the class that I took was actually an examination of uh, romantic literature, like capital R romantic, uh, which was pretty cool. Um, got to look at Nightly, nightly ballads and and different uh, romance poems and uh, how how all of their different objects interacted with each other. Uh, so yeah, that's that's my little rant on that topic. No, yeah, it's good. This is that's the whole reason I got a bunch of people with these kinds of backgrounds into this. So Tech congratulations Prisons. us. It took us only 17 episodes to have a, a, a full episode of Talos Principles where we have <laughs> nothing but we have mostly intellectual discussion. Yeah. <laughs> Emmanuel can, Matt. Emmanuel can. I will can't cut spell you. text analysis without anal. <laughs> or text. <laughs> All right. Woo. Ah. Uh, I'm just going to make satisfied noises for the rest of here on out. <laughs> Whew! Ah! Hmm! Mm, that's good, mm. Bill. Boy, there's mm. a lot of time left in that little gray piece of the time bar. <laughs> it's gonna, is it, is it going to be what uh, us watching ah. Matt look at the edges of the map for the for 20 ah. minutes? Hmm. 20 minutes? Hmm. Hmm. Whew! Uh, uh, I'm not actually looking at the gray time bar. Sheesh. Sounds like Sam ate too much God. of the cotillion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so in conclusion, come shitters. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. See you later. <laughs>